Hey there, and welcome to another exciting Educast video. Today, we are going to be looking at a tool from Mozilla called X-Ray Goggles that lets you remix live web pages right in your browser. This means you can start out with any site out there on the web and go right into its code to swap out text, images, links, and more, creating your own distinct version that you can save and share with others. It's a powerful tool for learning the tools of web design and for making creative commentary on web culture. What's more, it's free and easy to use. To get started, just head over to goggles.webmaker.org. As you can see from the URL, X-Ray Goggles are part of a suite of tools from Mozilla that are designed to help everyone learn how the web works and how to make their own web experiences. These tools are called the Webmaker tools and include Popcorn Maker and Thimble. We already have an Educast video on Popcorn Maker that you might want to check out. To maximize your creative potential with the Webmaker tools, it's not a bad idea to start by creating and logging into a Mozilla account. This way, you'll be able to store and access all of your makes in one place. So back to X-Ray Goggles. The first thing we'll do is click the big yellow button to activate X-Ray Goggles. Now you'll see, wherever we hover, the goggles highlight the current element on the web page and show you some of the code indicating how that element fits into the structure of the page, be it link, text, image, etc. When we click on one of those elements, a pop-up box opens showing us the source code in either basic or advanced views. X-Ray Goggles then gives you information about the elements and the code being used to make them work and look the way they do. I can click away and get back to the page I was on, and when I want to turn the goggles off, I can click here or just hit the escape key. While I've got the goggles off, I'm going to add the activate button to my bookmarks toolbar so that I'll be able to use it on any web page I want. To do this, you have to make sure that your browser's bookmark toolbar is visible. Then you just click and drag the activate button up into the toolbar. Now, when I'm visiting other pages, I can just click on the button in the toolbar to turn X-Ray Goggles on. So to start with a built-in example of how to use X-Ray Goggles, we're first going to copy this image URL here. Any image you find on the web has its own specific address, so any image URL would work for this example, but this one is handy and all set up for us. Once we've copied the URL for the image, we activate the goggles. Now we'll click up here on the X-Ray Goggles logo to open up the editing window. So here's all the code related to the logo image. We can hover over each part of the code to get an explanation of how it works and what each part means. And now, where X-Ray Goggles really gets cool, we can go ahead and change the code. So here, where we see the image source, we'll just highlight what is currently there and replace it by pasting the image URL we previously copied. You'll see in the preview window on the right that we have now changed the logo image to one that is wearing sunglasses. Click on Save Changes and we're brought back to the page where we can see that our image swap has been implemented. And that's basically how it works. So we could also click on a piece of text, go in, change it up, and see how it looks. Let's try it on another page now. Let's say that I want to remix the front page of the New York Times. I'll head over to nytimes.com and click out of any ads that pop up. And now I'm going to click on Activate X-Ray Goggles right here in the bookmark toolbar. Now before I make any changes, I'm going to suggest that we click the Publish button before doing anything else. The reason for this is that I may want to be able to compare my remix to the unaltered source especially if I want other people to be able to dig the complexity of my creative commentary. And with a site like the New York Times front page, the live version might change every few hours. We could always do a screen grab and save an image of the source, which may be enough depending on our remix, but part of the remix might include changing links, in which case preserving a working version of the original could be handy. So by publishing the remix before you've actually remixed it, we'll save that version. And then once I make some changes, I'll just publish again and I'll have a new remixed version. The only minor crinkle to this is that X-Ray Goggles doesn't let you give each version a descriptive name. So you have to kind of keep track of which one is which. 
Anyway, now I've saved a version of the source, I can start making changes to the NY Times the same way I did to the other page we started with. I can explore different elements and see how they work. You may find that some, such as multimedia ads, are too complex for x-ray goggles to be able to intervene. But when it comes down to it, most web pages are still just a combination of text, links, and images. And by changing those elements, you can make big changes in how a page looks and functions. We've already seen how we can change text and images. Let's take a look at how to change a link. I'll click on this headline text, because I know that when you click on a headline it takes you to the rest of the article. Now when the x-ray window comes up, I can see the different elements of a link. The href attribute is where the address for the link goes, and this space here shows you the text that is displayed for the link. So I could change one or the other, or both of these elements. If I want to keep the text the same, but change where the link goes, I just type a new web address, or I can leave the web address as is, and change the headline text. Or I can change both. And if I go to the advanced view, I can see what this code looks like more the way you would see it in a text editor program where a web designer might be making it, versus the basic view which tries to break it up and lay it out in a more visual and intuitive way. When I'm done, I just hit save. By exploring and playing around, and digging a little bit deeper so that you see exactly what you have to change in the code to get the result that you want, it's really a great way to expand your understanding of how web pages work. And that's pretty much it. With this basic approach, you can make powerful changes and commentaries. For example, I might want to remix the New York Times to focus on issues I care about but that I feel like are not represented there. Or maybe I think the New York Times does a great job of reporting the news, but I think that most people aren't paying enough attention, so I could remix it to focus more on celebrity gossip, playing with the visual dissonance I might achieve by plugging quote-unquote lowbrow content into a quote-unquote serious web page. When you're done, you can publish your work and share the link with whoever you like. I hope you find this to be a useful and enjoyable tool.